Just about halfway through the tournament, the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2022. We're just trying to figure themes, patterns, issues that teams have had to deal with. Let's leave the weather out of this conversation. But uh, if you're a South Africa with the Temba Bavuma issue, maybe to a degree Australia with the kind of form Aaron Finch has shown in the first couple of games. It only takes a game to turn things around. But we thought it makes for an interesting discussion. What do teams do when they have a captain that's performing or underperforming or performing below par? how it upsets perhaps the balance of the team, how teams tend to deal with it at the international level and maybe to a degree at the franchise level as well. Tom Murray is a man who has all the experience in the world on this subject. Gaurav Sundaraman also is going to add his two bits, including all the instances where teams have done this successfully or not. And we have Stephen Fleming, who's never had to deal with the issue until recently. We will come to that in just a moment from all these fine gentlemen. But uh, let's set up the chat for Flem and uh, Tom uh, GS. Uh, in the IPL, we normally say overseas captains a bad idea because he hamstrings the side and whatnot. In the inter in international sites, we've had just that one prominent incident of Chandimal literally dropping himself. Teams don't do that very often, though. Yeah, absolutely. Teams will not do that, mm -hmm. but there have been instances where captains have come to a big tournament, not in the greatest of form, yes, and they've actually gone through the tournament as well. Like taking an instance Owen Morgan in 2021, but his leadership is amazing uh, and people. Mm. Uh, valued his tactical decisions, but he, with the bat, he was not able to perform. Yeah. And what this ha what happens generally, at least what we see from the outside, is very rarely these uh, tough decisions are taken, because I think this format allows you to do that. Mm. But if it's a, maybe the longer format or the even the ODI format, I don't think I think more bolder decisions would have been taken. Even now, we, we're actually seeing that within this current World Cup, that we are there are batters who are not in form, who are captains. But I think you can kind of pull through and hope that one big innings comes through in that tournament. Mm. All right, Tom, I'm sure you've dealt with this in a number of teams across the world. How do you look at it? Is it a tricky thing to handle? It can be a tricky thing, but I think probably the most important aspect to it is how is it affecting the bigger picture? How is it affecting the team? What's the team's performance? Can the team afford to carry that captain uh, or any player for that matter if you don't want to disrupt the balance. Obviously it's a bigger decision with a captain because he's the one that is you know making the calls on the field and the, you know he's the one that provides continuity but if you've got a situation where your captain is horribly out of form and your team is clearly being affected by that and you're not performing you know day in day out like you should be you have to make a tough decision as simple as that. Uh, ideally, you don't want to be put into that position, uh, but there's a couple of teams in this World Cup that aren't playing the best of cricket, um, and they haven't been playing their best cricket leading into this tournament, um, and they've got this issue with the captain not firing. Mm. Right, let me get Flem's opening comments too before we take the conversation forward. I remember MS Tony saying it as captain in one of his uh, interviews during the IPL, Flem, that there's a luxury position in T20 cricket, or at least in the IPL. We can afford to carry one player who we may not choose to bat or choose to bowl. It, could that also be the case that that might be captain? I think if you look first and foremost at the skill set of the captain, it's got to be pretty high because that's usually what made them captain or, or why they would be in a leadership position. So it's really about that form. If their form personally is dropping off or there is other aspects uh, to their play that becomes a little bit different, then it becomes a talking point. But I agree with MS, you can carry, and, and the, the captaincy burden needs to then be, be and as Mood says, about the other players lifting and picking up the slack that's that's there and hoping that the captain will turn it round. They are one of the better players, so therefore the form should come right at some stage. So there's an element of hope that the form comes back as well. It's a, really, it's a delicate one because that leadership position can be so important. And you're yeah, balancing out the destabilizing of the team if you removed your captain or the status quo where the team could be still sailing along quite well. Take South Africa for, as an example, Tom. Uh, would you say as long as they're winning, it's okay to maybe carry Bavuma? But the nature of the World Cup is you could lose one crucial game and find yourself out. South Africa won four out of five games of the last World Cup and failed to make the semis. In Riza Hendricks, there's an informed batter, and Heinrich Klassen, there's an informed batter. So how do you deal with that? You say, no, as long as we keep winning, it's okay. But sometimes even one game could be a game too costly. Look, I think you need to look at the history as well. And Bavuma's history in T20 cricket isn't great. Mm. So I, I, I think he, if anything, has been unfairly put in that position of leadership. Uh, I'm not questioning his leadership capabilities. 
Um, I'm just que questioning whether that leadership and his skill set fit into that format and mm. is as soundproof as it should be. Uh, that's where my big question is. There's no question South Africa would be a better team with a slightly different um, set up at the top of their order, but purely if you look at you know the, the history of what's been happening there, uh, too much pressure has been put on their middle order. Uh, therefore, you know, are they a better team without Bavuma in it? You could, you'd have to say yes. Can it happen, Flem, that at times you've taken the decision, you're regretting it, but you don't want to make the decision to remove the player and you're almost waiting that the captain comes up to you and says, nah, I want to resign or drop me, I'm not performing. You're, you don't want to be the first one to make the move. Yeah, it can be that. He can have a bit of a standoff. Um, I, I think you've got to go back a little bit further. Cricket is, is, is wrapped around high, high performance. But when you look at captaincy, it's still really amateur in the way it's selected. Now, how many programs are put in place to develop the next captains of international sides? How many leadership programs are put in place where you pick four or five players and you really wrap around a captaincy program, discuss captaincy, give them opportunities maybe below the international level at domestic level and really groom them. There's not enough of that in my view. So there is still an element of luck and a little bit of hope when a captain is selected. If they haven't had a pedigree of captain or a franchise side for a period of time, often you're not quite sure what the complete package is going to be. The skill set is there, that's why they're in the side, but the leadership is is can be really complicated. If the team's going well, it can be quite smooth, but if it's not, you've got to deal with the off-field, the media, you've got to deal with the fan pressure, and then you've got to deal with your own performance. So there's a whole lot going on that as a coach or a, a selector, you're sitting there trying to weigh that all up. And if you come to the conclusion it's not the right uh, right person at the right time, uh, then you've got to work out then how the discussion is going to go. But very awkward one. Yes. Uh, Anything to add? Yeah, I just have a couple of questions yeah, to the panel. Uh, firstly, do you select the 11 and then select the captain? Or do you select the captain first and then pick a team around him? That is my first question. Maybe we can answer that and move to the next one. Tom? Well, I think your, your, your captain is, is selected before the 11 because it's, it's, it's selected before a series, it's selected before a summer. It's, it's, it's a, not just a short-term selection. It's a long-term vision that you have as an organisation that you see this person being able to you know, forge together a, a strong unit and, and you build your team around that first decision. Um, ideally, you don't want to be walking into a tournament, OK, what's our best 11, mm. and then handing out a captain's hat. I mean, Kane Williamson's an interesting conversation here. In a big year of retentions, Sunrisers went with uh, Williamson to be the leader, the captain, and go around him. There, is there a risk, though, in that, that what if he shows up with you know, the injury concerns and still plays mm. but doesn't have the impact with bad? Is, not, is that not a decision that sometimes you begin to regret? Yeah, you, you look back and and think that, well, OK, we have left ourselves open there, but you yep. also then have to look at the person that you're backing. Um, and I think that the view collectively uh, when that decision was made was that there's no question of Kane's capability as a, as a captain. Uh, tactically, he was incredibly sound. From his leadership perspective on and off the field, he was you know, flawless. Uh, and as a player up to that point, he was flawless. The only risk uh, we were taking at that particular decision was the recovery of his injury. Uh, and that was eight months out. So that was sort of, you'd back, the, the, you'd look at the history of that injury, other people that have had it, what is the timeline? And we felt that you know, that was a risk worth taking because he'd ticked two significant boxes. Yes, you had a follow up to that. You had a second question. Yeah, the second question is, how do you communicate this? Like one of the biggest uh, challenges for the captain is, uh, you know, the numbers are there. Everybody knows it's 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 an open secret. Everybody does know if a captain is not informed. But who takes the lead? Like uh, Ronak said, do you actually have to wait for that, or can you just go ahead and, as a coach, take that uh, ownership and uh, sack the captain, <laughs> or at least have that conversation? Well, well, I'm sure Flem would want want to have a, a, an answer to this as well. But my, my my take on it is that your relationship with the captain and every player, for that matter, is a relationship where you have constant conversations throughout the day, throughout the week, uh, you know, and you know exactly what they're thinking and feeling. Uh, so it's not a sudden 
walk through, knock on their you know, hotel room and say, listen, by the way, you're sacked. It, it doesn't work like that. You, you, you have many conversations around the team. You have many conversations around them as a player, how they're feeling, you know, how can we help support you, you know, whether it be technically, whether it be you know, through training, whether it be you know, anything to try to help recapture that. And through those discussions and communication, they may then sort of give you an invitation to take the conversation a bit further around whether they feel, you know, feel that it's time to maybe have a game or two, you know, rest to just to recharge and freshen up both mentally and physically. All right, Flem? Yeah, the, the captain, it's not a secret. The captain will be the most aware person in the planet. Everyone will be thinking, uh, what's this guy doing? The captaincy wears it on his sleeve. He's responsible for the team. He's responsible for his own performance. And if both of those things aren't going well, he feels the weight of the world on his shoulders. So as a coach, about support, and, and as Mood said, just creating that environment where uh, the dialogue is good, discussion, you're working hard to get things right, uh, to get the form of the player right, and, and hopefully the form of the team as well, because that's usually when the, the captain is under real pressure, when his form is down or her form is down, and the team's form is struggling as well. That's when uh, you get the media spotlight, certainly. Mm, all right, so just to wrap this up, given this is a conversation coming out of the currency of what's going on at the T20 World Cup. Let me just put Tom Moody and Stephen Fleming in the shoes of, say, the South African and the Australian coaches. Let's put you in the Australian coaches' shoes. We know there's a Cameron Green waiting who could take that very spot for Aaron Finch. I'm sure there are contenders who you could put in as captain. But would you take such a call in the middle of a World Cup? Maybe in the IPL, it's longer. That plays into a factor. World Cup, you know the nature of the format, Tom. Would you do it? Uh, I think at this stage, that conversation has to be had purely just the, the way that uh, you know, Finch's form's been not just short term but long term, uh, and forget Cameron Green because he could also m mix and match the the balance of the side and put Mitch Marsh at the top of the order and put Smith at three to give a little bit more stability to their top order. I think that that conversation should be very much uh, up and alive with right. regards to you as the captain and 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 the coach. Mm. Um, and if it's not, there's something going wrong. Mm. All right, Flem. Yeah, I think that, that's yeah, that's a good point for moods there. I was just sort of thinking about the South African situation. It's obviously not as straightforward uh, for South Africa. There are some complex selection issues that South Africa deal with, um, and and we respect that greatly. So it's a difficult one to really comment on the the South African selections because uh, they they have to work and operate uh, not as a traditional cricket side. They're working to a a, a greater plan, and we respect that and, and admire that. So. Yeah, it's really difficult. The, the main point is around performance. I think if the captain really does care for the team, he is carrying that weight. And if he's not lift weight, then he ultimately will make that call. And, and I think those discussions and that honesty is really important. If the captain doesn't have that and it gets removed, then it's probably the right decision. All right, there you have it. Thank you very much to Stephen Fleming, Tom Moody, Gaurav Sundaraman. It's never an a straight answer to these things because it's not a straight issue on how to deal with uh, an underperforming captain. We'll see if we do get some headlines out of any of these teams for the T20 World Cup. This was another exclusive chat on ESPN Trick Info with Tom Moody, Stephen Fleming and Gaurav Sundaraman.